You're listening to Rockology 101. This is Double K, and we're joined tonight by the lead singer of Striper, Michael Sweet. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. Good, so, to, good to be talking with you, man. You too. I'm so glad that you're joining us tonight. Um, you're going to be getting back out on the road next week. Yes, uh, we are uh, rehearsing in Nashville for a few days, and then we hit the road. I believe our first show is in Indianapolis on Friday uh, of next week, and, uh, and then we're going to be gone, be on a bus for about six weeks up until Thanksgiving. Oh, wow. And you're going to be here next Saturday at Del Mar Hall. Yeah, absolutely, and we're excited about it. I hope, hope everyone comes out to the show, and we're looking forward to it for sure. It's, it's a really fantastic venue. I know typically when you come to town, you play Pops, and the last time you were here, you played the Ready Room. And those are kind of gritty venues, but this, this venue is really nice. It's really new. It's only a couple of years old. Well, good. That's exciting. There are some great venues out there. It's always nice to go into a venue that's, uh, you know, uh, nice and hip and modernized. They've got great production and lights, and uh, there are a few rooms out there like that. sounds like this might be one of them, so that's very cool. Yeah, I think you're really going to like it. You know, instead of kind of that concrete feel, they've got hardwood floors, and and I think you're going to think it's really nice. Oh, that's great. Good. So you guys are rehearsing now. Good to hear. You know, I, I know you guys are spread out all across the country. How does that kind of work where you kind of have to assemble everybody like that? Well, you know, we we usually all fly into uh, one area. Uh, this time around, it's going to be Nashville. Uh, Perry was living in Nashville up until just a few months ago. Now he's back in Myrtle Beach, which is where he's from. So nobody lives in Nashville. Now, we do store our equipment there at a place called uh, Soundstage, and, or excuse me, Soundcheck. And, uh, you know, we go in, and we, we pull our equipment from a locker, we set up in a room, and we rehearse. It makes it real simple. Usually the bus companies are out of Nashville. And we, we all do what we got to do for two or three days. We jump on a bus, and then we, we hit the road. Uh, and we usually wind up coming back to Nashville to unload everything, and then everybody gets on a plane and heads home. And it just seems to work pretty well for what we need. And, you know, a lot of bands do it like that. Uh, sometimes we rehearse out of Boston, which is where I live. I have a little studio here, and, and all the guys come here and stay at my house, and we rehearse. We usually do that when we're making an album. Uh, sometimes we rehearse in Las Vegas as well. And, you know, you'd mentioned uh, Perry being in Myrtle Beach. Uh, Perry Richardson, this is his first tour with the band. He was one of the founding members of Firehouse. Uh, my understanding is he was having some problems with the flooding from Hurricane Florence. Sadly and unfortunately, yeah. Um, they just built a house, and, uh, you know, it's been, I believe, over 30 years uh, since anything of that magnitude has is, is hit that area. And... Um, you know, unfortunately, their house was one of many houses that got flooded. And, uh, you know, they've got to basically uh, pull everything out. They've already done that and tear out walls and, and not rebuild entirely, but, you know, do a lot of rebuilding. And it's really a sad situation. Uh, I, I, I can't believe it. I, I'm, my heart breaks for them and all the people that have, that have gone through that. Uh, it's just it's hard to believe. It really is. Yeah, that's a tragic situation, and, you know, it's not the, the first um, um, obstacle you guys have faced recently because Oz has had some health problems. He has. Oz fell in Las Vegas from a seizure, um, wound up um, being determined that he had uh, two, has two spots on his brain, small spots. They want to keep an eye on those spots to see if they enlarge any or what happens, so they have not done a biopsy at this stage he feels better uh he's home he's going out on the road with us and you know he seems to be doing pretty good right now and uh you know we're just praying that he continues to do so and uh, you know maybe it's just a little a little bump in the road and um uh, you know just uh one of those things that those one of those curveballs that gets thrown your way and and you know we we try to look at everything we go through everything that we face like this as, um, you know, something to make us stronger, you know, something to deepen our faith, something to help us to align ourselves more with God and to become stronger and to rise above and, and continue on. 
Uh, I, I like to use the phrase onward and upward. And, you know, uh, we go through these things to kind of toughen us up. And we've all been faced with things over the past 10 years, uh, some pretty heavy-duty stuff. But, you know, so so have many other people. And it's just part of life. And, you know, you can either take it and let it defeat you or you can defeat it. And, and Striper always takes that approach and that mentality that we're going to defeat it. We're going to we're going to move on. We're going to keep moving. We're going to rise above it, and, and we're going to be okay. And that's a promise from God, and we stand in that and stand on that. And you guys have seemed to have really hung in there because I mean you're still making great music. Where some of your contemporaries have kind of, you know, they've kind of gone a little retro, or maybe don't have the same quality of sound, and you guys still sound fantastic. Well, you know what, we, we I think what plays into that mostly is we still love what we do. You know, I, I run into people <clears throat> all the time, peers and friends and, uh, you know, uh, music industry folk, and I, I run into them, and, and I, I can see that they're defeated. I can see that they're burnt out or they don't enjoy it anymore or uh, they just don't have that passion and that love for what, they once had with you know for music um and it, it kind of it can go away and and shut the door and leave and and then you got to struggle to get that back so that never left us you know we 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 wake up in the morning with a cup of coffee raring to go to create music to play music to record music uh and it's been like that from the very beginning and it's still like that now and i think that plays a major role in that excitement that people hear in our music, and uh, it's the love of what we do and for what we do. And I think that really shines through because the quality of albums you, you're putting out are just fantastic. I mean, you know, especially these last few albums that you've put out, I think rival the you know the um, the albums that you were putting out at the peak of your popularity. Well, you know what, it, it, it's. Um, it's it's a it's a thing that Striper is before we do an album before we record uh, any song or songs we we kind of have a powwow and we we remind each other why we do this and why we want to continue doing it and the calling that we have in our lives the gifts that God's given us the abilities that He's blessed us with and to basically take those and let them shine for the world to see you know we don't ever want to just be going through the motions. And that goes for performing live, too. You know, I've heard people time and time again say, ah, here we go, i got to go do this again, man, this sucks. Oh, it's going to, oh, let's go get it done and get it over with. And, and I'm just thinking to myself, wow, how sad. Yeah. How truly sad. You know, when I get to that point, if I ever do, I don't want to do it anymore. You know, you know, I never want to just be going through the motions. I want to, uh, if that day ever comes, I'm I'm done. I'm retiring. And you know what I can say as a fan, I when you were here two years ago, I saw you for the fifth time, and it was when you guys put the yellow and black back on and did the Hell with the Devil in its entirety, and I thought it was the best show that I'd seen from you guys. I thought you guys were energetic and sounded fantastic. Wow. Well, I appreciate that, man. I, I really do. Um we we give our all. I mean, our all might be a little slower <laughs> and, you know, not as loud as 1984 or 5 or 6, but, man, we give our all. We go out there and we, we lay it all out on the stage. We always have. We always will. Like I said, the day, if that day comes when we don't, that's the day that we'll be making an announcement for sure. And you mentioned maybe not having quite the same sound as you had at that point. Um, you know, I noticed one of the things is, you know, the, the sonic screams that you used to unleash. Um, you know, those are kind of gone, but you still sound amazing. How was it for you kind of realizing where you were at with your voice and, and adjusting to what you were going to do on stage? Wow. Well, you know what? You're, you're too kind. You're being very complimentary. <laughs> And it's kind of throwing me. I I, uh, I appreciate it. Um, we it's it's all about just uh, you know we try to be try to be real and 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 try to perform with passion and write with passion and 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 just lay it all out there and and do so with a with a real approach to the faith 
and a real approach to life. You know, Striper's all about the music, but also equally as important, if not even more important, is the message. And, you know, helping people, inspiring people, encouraging people, uh, you know, lifting people up, not tearing people down. And and that's really important to us. And, you know, we try to take that approach with every song that we write. And it's difficult because, you know, you can you can fall into the trap of becoming very repetitive or cliche and kind of doing the same thing over and over again. And we try to, with every album and every tour, we try to make everything different, you know, so it's so it's fresh and it doesn't become stale. That's with our new album, GDE. We, we wanted... Uh, we wanted to try something a little different, you know, and, and, and there are a few songs on there that are that are different, like Take It to the Cross. You know, musically, people heard it, and they're like, what? What are you guys doing? You know, are you becoming a thrash band? And no, we're not becoming a thrash band, but we, we want to <coughs> switch things up a little bit and try to keep it interesting so people don't get bored, so we don't get bored. Uh, and, you know, it, it just shakes it up enough where, uh, you know, it, it keeps everyone's interest, including ours, and, and that's really important to us. I don't know if that answered your question or not, but, <laughs> no, no, you ab- know, absolutely. hopefully. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, speaking of the new album, I wanted to talk to you about that a little bit. Um, how has the reception to that been? Oh, it's been great. I mean, you know, that's the thing about Striper and our fans. We have a really amazing fan base, uh, and most people, most fans, Striper fans, go along with what we do and accept what we do, be it musically, be it, uh, you know, looks, if we change our look, uh, if we change our sound a little bit, if we if we change our show, our production, uh, our videos, what have you, most of the, t- most of the fans out there will, will come along and they'll climb on board and they'll be with us. Sometimes, occasionally, we'll, we'll have a, a fan or two or three that might say, eh, this isn't for me, like with the song Take It to the Cross. That was one of those things where <clears throat> it was so different. It was a real mixed reaction. We had uh, half of the people saying, I love it, and half of the people saying, I hate it. Uh, but uh, oddly enough, it, now that people have lived with it for a while, most people seem to like it. So we really try our best to experiment and stretch out and try different things with with each year, each album, uh, you know, each each thing that we do, for sure. And one of the things with this album that was a little different was the title. Um, I can't say the full yep. title on the air. Uh, we'll just refer to it as GD Evil. Um, but I know there was there were some problems with Walmart not carrying it, and there was a little bit of backlash there. Um, how is that kind of is that kind of settled down, as, or how has that been going? Well, I mean, I'm, I'm you know, with all due respect to not being able to say the title on the air. I think the reason why you can't say the title on the air is because uh, people don't understand what we're saying, and when they're told and it's explained what we're saying, nine times out of ten they say, "Oh, okay, I get it." It's really just a prayer. You know, it's not a twist of words. It's not us trying to be controversial. It's not us trying to be uh, hip or, you know, uh, or in just to get people's attention. It's a prayer. It's a prayer request, request asking, uh, asking God, you know, to basically do away with evil, to condemn evil. And, and, and unfortunately, because the, the, the two words used together is is well known and more known as a swear uh, that's why people are uh, quick to judge uh, the statement and to say oh we can't say that but you know it it's it's a prayer of ours and as it should be a prayer of everyone's in the world that we live in asking god to condemn evil I mean, God to protect us from evil. To you know, as the, as the the valley, the song, the valley says, uh, "Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Protect me, God, from evil. You are my protector. Condemn evil. I won't fear it." And that's really all it all the song says, and all the title says. And I think it's really powerful. It's my favorite song on the new album. Um, you know, I think it's, it's, for me, it's a song that I hope you put in every set list going forward. Well, we do. We do perform it live. And I, I tell you, you know, people, I think that since the dust has settled, people get it. 
they understand what we're saying. Yes, it's it's bold. Yes, it's somewhat shocking. And we understand all of that, of course. And we want to be sensitive to that. But at the same time, it's that's not. We don't mean it as a in a blasphemous form or uh, a swear or just to take God's name in vain or anything like that. And I think most people understand that without even being explained that. Uh, but you know, it's it is in the set. It's a powerful song. It's an instant classic. I mean, we we play it right up against the hell with the devil, and it holds its own. Yeah, no, when I heard that, I, I agree with you. I was like instant striper classic. It is. It, it really is. And when you hear it live and see it live, it, it, you, you may even agree more that it is definitely a striper classic. And, and it's, a, it's a brand new song from 2018, and uh, it has that feel of a, of a striper song that's been around for a long time that is a classic striper song. And I think that's really important that you can still put those out. You know, a song like that or like Yahweh or to me are songs that are just so powerful and just kind of hit you in the face. And and it's really important to be able to put out that kind of music still. Absolutely. And, you know, I think personally, I've got a gut feeling, Lord willing, that he keeps us here on earth uh, for another 25 or 30 years. I believe that we can keep putting out songs and music that's equally as powerful as the title track of our new album or as Yahweh for the next 20, 25, 30 years. Uh, Again, it comes down to the passion, and it comes down to the calling. And if we have those two things, there's no stopping us. You know, age has no limitations. Uh, As long as we're healthy... And we could still perform. And, you know, it's as silly as it might sound. Can you imagine Striper recording a song like Yahweh and just as good and powerful as Yahweh when we're 75 years old? That would be absolutely I mean, amazing. It, I, it, it's, it's very possible. And, it, again, Lord willing, uh, we'll do it. So as a fan, I had an album I wanted to ask you about because it's my personal favorite but I know it is your least favorite, and that's against the law. And I think the reason why it's my personal favorite is I know you guys were going through some tough times back then, um, dealing with other Christians and how you were being accepted. And I think that's why I love that album so much, because obviously not in the same way, but as a Christian myself, I felt that way. And I was wondering if maybe you could talk a little bit about that time and maybe speak to some other Christians who have been in that position and how you were able to come out of that. Well, I'll tell you, with Against the Law, it's interesting because there's there's always debate over that one. And some people get uh, offended from time to time over things that I say about it. And it, it doesn't change, nor will it change my opinion of it. Uh, I think it's a, it's a good album. I think if any other band released it, it, it would be a really good album. So it's not to take away from it. It's obviously quality. It obviously sounds good. But I think when you compare it to a classic like Soldiers Under Command, there's just no comparison. And what I mean by that is Soldiers was the definitive signature striper look and sound. So we were at our, our prime with the, with the yellow and black, and, and the stripes and the look, we were at our prime with the music. We were at our prime with the guitar tones, with the sound. That, that is, love it or hate it, that is the signature striper sound, okay? C- kind of like comparable to like Van Halen 1. You know, that, that's that signature Van Halen sound, just as uh, Soldiers is our signature striper sound. Then you fast forward to like Van Halen with Sammy Hagar, and it's really great. But it's no longer the signature Van Halen sound. It's, it's a different sound. It's a really good sound. They charted. They sold a lot of albums. They sold out arenas. Obviously, many people loved it. But it was a different band. You know? Totally different band. Against the law, in my opinion, same kind of thing. I think that's a we fair a comparison. Different look, Different look, different guitar sound, different style of writing, different style of singing, different style of songs, different style of production. Love it or hate it, totally different band. That's why it's my least favorite. 
because I feel like we I feel like we sold out in a lot of ways, and we just compromised who we really were and are and should be to make that album. If that makes any sense, and uh, and and I think. Going back at the time, some people argue with me and say, oh, it was, it, that has nothing to do with it. It's all related to the times, and, you know, that was the 90s, and grunge was coming in, and no band had a chance. And, well, that's not really true, because Firehouse broke in the 90s, you know? And, and Firehouse was had the big air and the look and the ballads. I finally found the love of a lifetime. They were very 80s, you know, and they broke in the 90s. So it's not really altogether true that it was a sign of the times, but that was our least selling album and, and our least popular album. It, it The fans really spoke it by not supporting that album like the others. You know, Soldiers... Uh, went platinum uh, to hell, went multi platinum, and God went multi platinum, and then against the law came out, and it didn't even go gold. Oh wow! I didn't realize that it had sold so little compared to the other albums. Oh yeah, I mean, like frighteningly lower. And 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 then, like I said, I, I'll 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 mention that online, and people get up in arms and say oh, it has nothing to do with it. Well, it does. It's kind of got everything to do with it. <laughs> You know, the fans, most fans didn't like that album, or they didn't like the time that that album came out and what we were going through or the or the attitude or whatever it was. Just everything together, they didn't buy it, and they didn't support it. And we saw, we went from arenas to clubs. And that's a drastic yeah, job. Li- literally overnight. So when we when we released that album, we prior to that we were playing arenas, and then when we released that album, we were playing clubs. Wow. Yeah, it was. See, it was insane, and a lot of people don't know those those details and those facts, and that says it all. You know, those are the facts. Those those are the stats, and and the stats, the the numbers don't lie. You know, and it's a great album. You put it on, you're like, wow, this sounds really good. This is a good album. It is. But it's not classic Striper in every sense of the word. No, you make some really valid points on that. I can definitely see that. When you were in that place. Yeah. When you were in that place. I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh, no, I was going to say, when you were in that place with that album, um, (laughs) How did you bring yourself back out of that? Well, I mean, sadly, what had to happen, we we wound up, our record label wound up closing its doors, which didn't help either, you know. Uh, And we wound up going to another label called Hollywood Records, and that's when we released that album called Can't Stop the Rock. We had two songs on that, a song called... uh, uh, believe in another one called Can't Stop the Rock. And, you know, we did a few shows in support of that, but I mean, it was really a sign of the times and in end times, really, for Striper. And uh, the only way to really, you know, uh, kind of move forward and, and, and seal up and wrap up an and end of that era of Striper was to, to part ways. And I, I, I woke up and realized that I needed to do that for my family and get my priorities in order. And, uh, you know, just kind of prioritize my priorities and put at numero uno, obviously God, and then, and then my family. And the music was coming above my family and, and even coming above God sometimes during the Against the Law period because we were, we were out, you know, uh, living a different life during that period, which wasn't good. And... Um, you know, it's it was one of those things where I woke up and I I made the decision, a very tough, difficult decision. I talk about it in my book, honestly, and uh, I made the decision to leave, and it was very hard. But I'm glad that I did because <clears throat> that closed the door on the old striper and opened a door on the new striper. And uh, I moved back east with my family in '95 lived a different life, got back into music around 99, 2000, and then Striper got back together in 03, and we've been going ever since. 
Well, I'm glad you guys did because you it's just been amazing to see you guys back together. And, and you know, when you see a band break up like that, you never know if they're going to you know find their way back together. And it's been good to see you guys. I tell you, man, I, for the longest time, I thought we would never find our way back together. <clears throat> I mean, that old uh, saying, when hell freezes over, that the Eagles pinned, you know, and used. Um, that's kind of how it was. I, I just didn't see it happening. Uh, if you had asked me back in, in uh, 1999 or 2000 if Striper will ever get back together, I would have said absolutely not. Uh, but miraculously, we did. We went out and did what was called a celebration tour in 03. We weren't officially back together. And through that, things went so well. And through that, uh, we wound up getting another bass player, Tracy Ferry. And it just kind of revived the band from 04 to uh, 2009. Uh, and then we went out and, and continued to tour. And, you know, now we've got Perry. Perry Richardson, who has revived the band again, and, and even more so. And, uh, you know, we really feel re-energized and renewed and restored, and uh, it's it's pretty amazing. You know, it, it really is. And we feel like there's a lot more life to the band and, and a lot more to do. Well, we're definitely looking forward to seeing you here next Saturday. Before I let you go tonight, you know, you're probably one of the, the busiest men in, in all of music. Um, there's always a Striper album coming out. There's always another Michael Sweet album coming out. There's a Sweet Lynch album coming out. After this tour, what are you working on next? Well, I am um, absolutely uh, coming home after the tour at Thanksgiving. And during the holidays, I'm going to be writing. I've already got some ideas uh, for a solo album. And I'm going to be writing um, the rest of the material for another solo album, a follow-up to One-Sided War. And I start recording that in January. Um, And, you know, really, really excited about that. I'm going to go in and basically cut the, uh, the basics, and then we're going to go to Japan, Striper, and perform some makeup dates uh, in Japan, come back, and then I'll finish the album. That, that'll that come out probably, if I had to guess, uh, maybe around May, May or June of next year. And then Striper will start recording a new album at the end of next year, probably around October or November, and that'll come out the beginning of 2020. Wow, you are always so, on the you know, board. I've got it down. I don't like to do too much. I don't like to release two and three albums a year. A lot of guys do. I feel like you can get to a point where you start to compromise quality and compromise your uh, ability to to do it right. You know, and I, I never want to cut corners in any way. So I try to do like an album a year. You know, like maybe uh, Michael Sweet will come out. Uh, beginning of one year, and Striper will come out uh, at the end of the of, of you know uh, try to make it so there may be spaced out, uh, you know, seven, eight, nine months apart, and uh, and and that seems to work well for me. I, I really enjoy doing it, and that way I'm staying busy, but not so busy that I'm I'm just pumping out uh, repetitive stuff. I I, tr- I want to keep it fresh and and and, 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 and you know. Uh, I want to keep it fresh and exciting. Well, you're definitely putting out some of the best work of your career. I, I think One Sided War is is by far my favorite solo album of yours, so I'm really looking forward to what you have next. Me too, man. I'm, I'm really excited. I, I can tell you this. It's going to be this, a similar lineup. Uh, I'm going to have Will Hunt on drums, same drummer on One Sided War. Uh, I'm going to have John O'Boyle on bass, same bass player on One Sided War and on um, GDE as well. And then I'm going to have uh, Ethan Brosh back for some solos. And uh, I'm going to have uh, uh, Joel Holkstra back for some solos and then maybe have someone else come and um, and do some solos as well. I'm talking to a guy uh, by the name of Mike Kerr, uh, who's a local musician from Massachusetts, who's phenomenal. 
He's really great. I saw him perform for the first time, and I was very impressed. And I'm going to have him play a solo or two as well on the new album. Uh, and then I may try to get someone like a, um, you know, a Gus G or a, a Nuno Bentoncourt or an, an Andy James or, or someone, someone of that caliber to come and do a solo or two and just uh, blow everybody away. But it's going to be exciting and a great follow-up to the last album, One Sided War, for sure. Well, I'm really looking forward to it, and I'm looking for your sh- forward to your show on s- next Saturday night. That is October 14th, and that's at the Del Mar Hall. That's Striper, so if you don't have your tickets yet, go out and get them. Thank you so much for joining us tonight, Michael. Hey, brother. Absolutely. Thanks for having me, and my apologies uh, for being late, and uh, God bless you, man. You take care.